people want to assume if you're in an agent role, AI is trying to eliminate me in some way, shape, or form. Um, I would say it's really eliminating certain tasks. So which task do you want to eliminate? It's neutral. Like, let's figure it out. Let's figure out which tasks you don't like doing. Or let's yeah. figure out what tasks are so repetitive. They're copy and paste for predefined content. And you don't need to be doing that. It's not the highest and best use of your time. No. Welcome to Conversations That Matter, a podcast from Unifor. Here, we explore the latest customer experience trends, sales insights, innovations in AI and automation, and more with well-known thought leaders and industry experts. Tune in and join the conversation. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Conversations That Matter. We've been doing this for three years, so we want to thank all of you that are listening in. This has been quite a journey to hear from the latest and greatest uh, CX leaders as well as conversational AI leaders that are in multiple different industries. And so today we have a fantastic guest. He is within the financial uh, space, and he is an AI innovator, a conversational AI expert. Uh, he is the VP and senior digital product manager for conversational AI at Citizens. And he's based out of Charlotte, North Carolina. And let's welcome Bill Hawks to the podcast. Welcome, Bill. Thanks, Randy. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, I'm really excited uh, to speak with you. This has uh, been something that I really want to dive into because you're definitely the conversational AI expert. And we love talking to people at banks because we know that is a, a, a prime example of where conversational AI can be used within the customer and as well as the agent experience. Uh, so as we start off with any podcast, we want to start off with debunking a myth. So from your perspective and how you go about doing your job, what is the, uh, the myth that you would like to debunk? Ooh, I mean, there could be multiple. Uh, the one I would probably say is that as large language models and generative AI came onto the scene, there yeah. is an assumption that uh, designing chatbots actually got easier. And I don't think that's true. Um, there are some pieces of the process that have been accelerated and that's beautiful and I love it. Um, yeah. But there are other elements of design work and understanding the logic and what's gonna happen if and when that actually got much harder. Uh, and so a lot of those are not ready for uh, client facing uh, environments yet. So yep. good to take them inside, use them with teammates that will forgive you a little bit. Uh, and we'll <laughs> yeah. take screenshots of everything and post it online. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I would say that the myth that, you know, hey, now we have generative AI and large language models. We can just have, you know, any startup, you know, give us a chatbot in a few weeks. It's just not true for my environment, at least, um, and yeah. publicly traded, highly regulated. Uh, you know, our conversations matter. If you give your uh, podcast a little, <laughs> little yeah. kudos there. Um, and, and like the, I, I love analogies. So for yeah. me, it's, it's an analogy of like, yes, my, my toddler can cook in the kitchen with me. Like she's great. She loves cooking scrambled eggs. Um, yeah. and like I could release her. And she'd be smart enough to get the right ingredients out, right? <laughs> um, but I also am not going to leave her alone with a hot stove. Um, and I'm not going to trust right. her to cook dinner for the neighbors and myself because if it's not prepared well, they might not like it. And if it's exactly. really not even done, they might get sick. I mean, they can get food poisoning from this stuff if you don't uh, don't tend to it well. Yeah, I love that. I love that an analogy. Um, I mean, I have kids myself, so I, I totally can relate to that. Um, I, yeah, I think we're in the early stages of of generative AI. I mean, people, I know we've been doing it uh, and, and working on it probably since uh, 20, 2019. So I think there's um, some work to be done. And, and I think you're right, depending on the industry that you're in, you definitely need, um, you need to take your, you know, your, your precautions and have a strategy in place, right? Yeah, I think it's it's a maturity model, right? It depends on where you're starting from. You know, some brands have had chatbots out there for years and years. And yeah. so the move to generative AI, they already have the policies and the people and the process in place to yeah. take that jump quicker. Um, if you've never done it before, 
generative AI is probably not going to be your first swipe at the uh, conversational uh-huh. AI landscape, right? You need to, to yeah. learn the basics of um, dialogue management, tip management, you know, modeling, um, conversation design, approval processes, all that good stuff for a brand as big as ours. Yeah, for sure. So tell us, uh, you know, about your job. Uh, what is your your day to day? I'd love to hear about that. Yeah, so I've been in sort of a product leadership role for quite a while now, uh, mm-hmm. but uh, in coming over to Citizens from Truist previously, um, a lot of what I do is I'm building out a team, uh, so getting them familiar with some of the concepts for conversational AI, uh, preparing a backlog or a roadmap, depending on yeah. which way you're looking, right? Uh, if you're zoomed in, it's just the backlog for the team. If you're zoomed out, it's the roadmap for the whole program. Uh, so you know, preparing those things, bringing definition and design to what is it we need to build and why, and why should we even fund that? What impact will it have in the marketplace? Um, how much money could we possibly save via containment? And if okay. that's the goal, how do we do containment well? So it's not just, well, it looks like they were contained. That's great but they ended up having to contact us some other way. Um, I think that's a weakness of a lot of chatbots right now. It's like, oh, it looks like there was no transfer to human. That's a good thing, right? It's like, yeah. uh, no, they just ran into your digital fortress and they're going to go find you another way that cost them gas money, cost them time, and cost your company money on top of what you already invested. So um, just trying to bring the vision and bring the focus to the program, build a team and then bring like even more concrete definition to what do we do next? Uh, that's awesome. I mean, it definitely sounds like it keeps you busy. Um, yeah, and, for sure. and for those that are unfamiliar with Citizens, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the company. Yeah, so uh, Bank is based out of Rhode Island. Uh, so Providence, Rhode Island headquarters uh, does have sort of a core regional, uh, super regional type of footprint to it. Uh, if you are into sports, you've probably seen us in the New Jersey and PA area quite a bit uh, with the New Jersey Devils and New York Giants and okay. Philadelphia Phillies. And you've seen Citizens Bank Park uh, from Philadelphia. You've probably seen our logo around. Um, we're highly diversified, which I love being in a bank that's highly diversified. Um, obviously, there's uh, a lot of banks and financials in the news uh, for not being properly diversified. So. I love that Citizens has a lot of different products and a really strong consumer base. Um, so great bank uh, growing and actually has plans for a national expansion. Um, so I know if you're looking for a high yield savings account, we've got one of those uh, on our national mm-hmm. expansion product line and uh, encourage you to check it out. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so we'll put a, a show link, uh, sorry, a link in the show notes. Uh, and make sure that everyone uh, can get that. Um, so just for those of you that are listening in, uh, thanks for listening in. If you have um, any questions or comments about today's podcast and our, our amazing guest, Bill, uh, make sure to use the hashtag CTM podcast, CTM podcast. This is being recorded, but we will respond back and we'll make sure that we get to answer your questions as well. Uh, and so uh, when we get to... Uh, Conversational AI, um, I'd love to kind of hear from your perspective uh, on how conversational AI and, uh, is being leveraged to help the agent experience um, at, at Citizens. Yeah, so I, I would say it's another area of um, just, it's on the scale of maturity, right? So yeah. we've got some knowledge bases that are in a more rigid database type of system. It's not very searchable, a lot of PDFs. Uh, and so there's an opportunity that we're currently exploring and, and working on that's you know, more of a, a POC to yeah. take some of those um, items that are in the knowledge base and turn them into more of a chatbot and uh, knowledge AI type of search. So cool. that will impact our agents in a positive way on the chat side. For sure. Um, and then as we mature, just any type of um, context in our landscape, um, I think you know the, the holy grail for most contact centers would be omni-channel routing uh, and yeah. add AI to that. So intelligent routing, give me to the right person at the right time of the day uh, with the right skills based on just the words I'm saying or just my past interactions or you know just 
could continue to build out that AI yeah. algorithm uh, to make sure you're with the right person who handles those types of conversations really, really well. A person might be skilled for five to 10 different skills. That's great. But if they're really good at handling overdraft stuff or yeah. really good at handling and sort of disarming angry customers, well, let's let them do what they're good at. Um, if they're really much better suited to like new conversations and prospects, let's let them do more of that versus existing customers and right. Makes uh, sense. fees and that sort of thing. So that's the, the vision and the dream. I can't get into exactly how we're making all of that happen or what yeah. timing all that would, would occur on, but um, the vision yeah. for a contact center to be omni-channel and highly intelligent in who we go to, when we go to them, um, and how we inform the agent as that conversation comes to them is uh, critically important to our future. I love that. And, and yeah, we're not, we don't need to get into any of those yeah. specific details, but uh, what I love uh, is just the the true business value that you're, you're, you're bringing as well as the true customer experience that you're bringing. So for any agent out there that's listening in, all these tools want to help me, make your, your job better, right? Want to make you operate more efficiently. Um, yeah. So that's, it's awesome that you're, that's, you have that in the back of your mind. Cause you know, there's some people that will just go in and just like, rip and replace and that's not what uh that's not what we should do right so I think yeah i mean i uh, think yeah. ai like any technology is sort of neutral at the start right people want to assume if you're in an agent role ai is trying to eliminate me in some way shape or form um i would say it's really eliminating certain tasks so which tasks do you want to eliminate it's neutral like let's figure it out let's figure out which tasks you don't like doing or let's yeah. figure out what tasks are so repetitive, they're copy and paste for predefined content. And you know, you be doing that. that's not the highest and best use of your time. No. I would love to see our contact center continually transform to an advice center and a oh, life okay. event center, right? Like there's times yeah. when the bot is purely sufficient. It's great. It's an everyday banking task. You're looking for an answer. You're looking for a button to punch. You're looking for yeah. uh, a way to move money that, you know, ways that banks do. Yeah. That's that's perfect for the bot. You know, it's bread and butter, everyday banking. If somebody passed away in your family or you're going through marriage or divorce, you yeah. know, uh, these are things that are better for our human agents to handle. And totally, really the human agent might feel more satisfied at the end of the day if they did a few more of those, right? You know, yeah, yeah. But they got yeah, to yeah. connect with somebody and empathize with them versus, oh, yep, I see what the problem is on your account. Click, click, done. Yeah, I mean, when you're in that moment in life, that's the last thing they want to do is to be frustrated, right? <laughs> you're already frustrated. Yeah. You, you want you want to have that positive experience and that and that uh, positive outcome uh, for the day. So I, I, that's that's awesome. Um. So uh, when we come to uh, to to your success uh, and what you're measured on, what does your you know dashboard look like? Uh, you know, what metrics are you looking at? Good question. Um, I think across all of digital, we share some OKRs um, mm -hmm. or objectives and key results. So we have some things that we want to launch. We have some things that we want to see as far as the ratings and stuff like that mm -hmm. um, for our digital client experience. Um, but where mine becomes unique is I sit in the sort of virtual client experience. So I get one right. foot in digital, one foot in contact center, which is assisted. And so you're constantly looking at assisted transactions or assisted conversations versus unassisted conversations. So yeah. that's sort of top of funnel. Like I'm looking at my campaigns to see, hey, these chats came in over here on this channel. How many of them were assisted or unassisted? And that's yeah, really big picture type of stuff. Sure, and right. another big picture would be CSAT and NPS, right? Your your net promoter score. Of of yep. The overall feeling and experience you got after completing something. Um, so those are the big picture ones. If I were to drill down into like conversational AI, not always going to share every bit of that with every executive, you know, there's different right. levels of the company that want different information. Um, of course. But I look at containment and 
I would often quote this differently. So I quote raw containment. It's just how many times did the bot transfer uh, okay. versus containment by design. And what I'm looking for there, containment by design, is uh, a secondary metric to confirm that not only did you stay with the bot, uh-huh. but you also had uh, what I would call contact resolution, and best case, first contact resolution. Yeah. You know, sure. Within a few minutes of you interacting, you feel like your issue was resolved, and you right. tell us that on your way out that it was resolved. That's a yeah. perfect scenario because I have that second variable to say this is not just abandonment. This is not frustration. This is right. resolution, and that's critically important yeah. for, um, I think, our industry to start to grab hold of. Yeah, no, that's that's... That's spot on. I mean, that's that's great that you're looking at that because, you know, there's, there's we're not going to name names, but there's definitely some companies out there that <laughs> um, that, that f- focus just on implementing the technology and, and don't have that dashboard that's that's there to to optimize and to continuously yeah. iterate. Because I think, you know, whether it's the technology that's changing, you know, or you know, every couple months, whether it's the customer expectations are changing. Um, you know, always have to take a look at that. So those are some some great metrics. One uh, thing I'm excited yeah. about um, and what we can do, thinking about things as we aggregate data into like a data lake environment and then uh-huh. an operational store for that and yeah. recontact rate. So we have some simple uh, views into recontact rate that are mostly like digital specific. Uh-huh. But if you can get recontact rate sorted out, across all the different ways that somebody could have interacted with you, have a 360 view of touch points that your customer hit. That's right. something I'm really excited about. Um, by no means are we perfect. Uh, nobody's data is perfect. And if they're telling you that, <laughs> don't trust them because <laughs> yeah. you know, they're, they're not. But um, I really yeah. think recontact rate can be just fascinating to look at across channel um, and being able to get it back to a unique ID of who was it and what did they use to solve their problem? I think it's yeah. going to be really helpful for us. Um, and there's some recontact that's good, right? Like if you were to come in and use my chat service this week yeah. and your intent was, um, you know, locking a card and then you okay. came back next week and you had found your card or you went back to the their bar or the restaurant that had your card and you grabbed it yeah. and you unlocked it, that's not a bad recontact. That's great. Right. Yeah, that's right? great. Yeah. And you yeah. trust the chat bot to do the job. You're task oriented yeah. and did the, did the job quite well. It did it. Uh, that's wonderful. There's other recontact that you didn't feel like you got resolved in the first time. You're frustrated that you have to call or have to chat a second time. And yeah. we want to start to understand that full picture. You know, you mentioned something earlier in the podcast about, uh, people that were engaging with the chat bot and you don't really know whether they really got the answer to their question, whether the issue was solved or not. And sometimes the only way you can find that out, if they, there's two, two things that can happen. Either they never tell you and they get frustrated and then they switch to another mm-hmm. service, which sucks yeah, <laughs> or terrible. And that, and that, yeah, terrible. Or, or that MPS uh, survey that goes out, you know, are you, are you, are you likely to, you know, refer this to someone else? You know, add some comments. I mean, that's probably where you might find that, you know, I get that like in the travel industry, you know, you get an email after you, uh, you know, check out from the hotel and, you know, how was the service? And I'm always the guy that goes in and just like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're asking, I'm going <laughs> to put in all the details. Yeah. Um, so it, it's, uh, Definitely something um, I think that uh, is something uh, re- to always clearly and concisely look at. So uh, great to see. Yeah, like um, I said, there's yeah. it's a secondary metric in a lot of cases. You know, survey results yeah. are not going to be perfect. Some people hate no. surveys. Other people want to give you a piece of their mind, right? Yeah, um, yeah. So, it, and it also depends on the relationship you have with that that customer, right? If they're yeah. highly invested, they've been a customer for a long time. True. They're more True. likely to tell you what you could be doing better. Yeah. If, if they, they be... are likely to switch for the next best credit card, they might not tell you anything. They might just leave. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so we have yeah. to be cognizant of that as we as we move things forward. On a previous conversation that we had uh, together, we talked about a methodology that that you use uh, called framework over fragment. 
And I wanted to kind of do a deep dive on that. Can you explain to our listeners what that means and give a little context around what you were talking about? Sure. Yeah. Uh, what I see in multiple different uh, institutions that I've either worked for or partnered with or um, have gotten a view into from you know peers that are on advisory councils, that kind of thing, is that they're often frustrated by the silos and fragments of their own environment. And I will ask them, you know, where do you think that's showing up for your client? Like, can you go map out and journey map where your client actually felt that fragment? They felt that this was not a one uh, unified experience, that your phone system doesn't talk to your chat system and vice versa. Uh, your agent who had you this morning has uh, never had any kind of insight into uh, the thing you talked about last night. That's a problem, right? Whereas yeah. if you did design contact center technology and virtual customer service technology, and you were the start of it, you would design those things to be connected and to talk to each other. And uh, I just, I really want, you know, more more institutions, companies to think about what's your framework, what should be connected, and where does it map into the client experience? Yeah, that's great. No, great advice. Great advice. Uh, for those that are listening in, uh, if you agree with that, um, if you have any comments around that, we'd love to hear about it. Use the hashtag CTM podcast. That's CTM uh, podcast. Uh, Bill, thanks uh, for sharing that. That's a um, great methodology, and, and I think a lot of people can, can benefit, from, benefit from that. Um, so let's get, uh, we're getting close to the rapid fire, uh, of our, of our podcast. Uh, you know, you've, you've given us really great, uh, nuggets of wisdom around conversational AI and around your methodologies and, and around, uh, how you guys are working at citizens. Um, so I appreciate you really, um, joining us today. Before we get to the rapid fire, we'll just do one more question about kind of your career. Uh, what was one point in your career that you look back at where, uh, it was a moment of change or maybe accelerated pace uh, that was a positive outcome uh, for you uh, to where you are today. Yeah, uh, I could say there's several different things here that I look back and I, I thank God for certain things that have happened or whatnot that I, I can't take too much credit for. Um, <laughs> so when I tell this story, you know, please don't think it's about ego at all, but um, <laughs> yeah. what, what I would say was a really good moment was I had been uh, brought on to manage a bank's website. Uh, at the time, it was BBT. So I owned BBT.com and uh, thought I was there to manage a website. And then somebody said, Oh, by the way, you have chat. I'm like, I have chat? What do you mean? <laughs> so I got to know chat by way of, Hey, you manage the website, you have to do chat. And uh, yeah. it was a, a big blessing to learn that environment as I learned it. I was telling people, yeah, we really should get on this thing. Like, we got to get on the chatbot train. We got to start using um, some of these conversational AI you know, principles here. Yeah. And it wasn't really received. It's like, okay, you know, let's just learn how to manage the website first, buddy. You know, like, uh, do, do what you can to, to add value there. And we'll talk about the chatbot stuff later. And yeah. it's just funny how it would fall on deaf ears, right? You know, you got to kind of prove yourself and build your network and, that sort of thing. So I kept kept at it, you know, persevered, um, continued to add value and show some chatbot containment here and there um, in the limited scope. And then a big merger happened between BB&T and SunTrust. And um, oh. in that, got to you know transition some of the chat responsibilities uh, to different people throughout the bank. And, uh, you know, started to almost miss it. Like, what am I missing out on? Uh -huh. I really want to, I've been telling people we should build a, a virtual assistant for five years now. And, you know, <laughs> hasn't happened. Well, I had this opportunity where I knew that they were going to build a virtual assistant. And yeah. man, I, I have been telling people about this. I must be passionate about it. You know, yeah. what if I tried to ask, you know, to lead the project and to sort of assert myself and say, hey, do you guys have the right people on board for this project? Yeah. Um, and, you know, went from feeling, okay, you got left out because of all the transition and merger stuff that naturally happens, right? When you hand off different yeah. things to different people in a merger to, 
um, I asked the question. It was very direct. You know, can I lead this initiative? I'm passionate about it. Here's what I know. Here's what I can do. Do you have anybody that's thinking this way? And fortunately, you know, in God's timing and providence, uh, the yeah. the leader that uh, was responsible for hiring was like, actually, I think I can make this work. And after awesome. a few weeks, got put in to head up the Tourist Assist product. And so that definitely accelerated sort of the visibility for me and the company and the yeah. ability to focus on conversational AI and learn that space really deeply. And um, so that was just a really cool, like, that's, part of acceleration awesome. of like putting your neck out there and just going for it. I love that you know that specific point in your career because I think everyone has that moment of, um, of opportunity uh, in everyone's life, whether it's on the personal side of their life or whether it's on the, uh, on the you know, career work side of life. So, um, but that definitely kind of shows kind of that you knew what you wanted. Right. And I think the best way that, that people can be successful is that if they know what they want to be passionate about and that mm -hmm. they also get the opportunity to be passionate about that. And so that's really cool to, to see. Yeah. I mean, I think for me, I know that there will be other moments right? Oh, of course. And yeah. It's, yeah. it's part of just being moment. mindful enough to have written something down that says, you know, I'm interested in this, or I see myself as this type of leader yeah. and then take that something when it does sort of cross through your worldview and crosses path, your, your path, you go, yeah. you know what, that kind of matches up with what I wrote about a year or two ago. Yeah. Let me circle back to that. Let me, let me like actually double down on an effort because that one matches, oh. right? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, well, thank you for sharing that. Uh, so let's get to the rapid fire. Uh, these are some quick questions that quick, you know, questions and answers uh, that we always ask on our podcast. And one of the first ones that we always ask is, if you were to call into a contact center, or say you're talking, with the, you're, you're engaging with a virtual assistant, you want to talk to a human, and that human could be a celebrity, an artist, a musician, whatever celebrity it might be. Um, and that person could solve your problem. You know, you would be at ease. You would go on your merry way, and you, you know you're taken care of. Who would that person be? And this could be, person could be dead or alive. Oh man, I should have prepared for this. Uh, <laughs> I've seen I've seen you asked this question before. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna say, if I think of just the voice that I would copy, it'd be like Morgan Freeman or Matthew McConaughey. But then I think of yeah, people I just. <laughs> admire and think are really cool people um a golfer actually Payne stewart just to give uh, you something yeah. off, off the beaten path uh, he just had a fun personality he, he was did, yeah. wearing the, he wore those uh, pants right the pants that would uh kind of yeah, rise up the socks that would rise the up. plus fours yeah. and the crazy hats and um he was, he he was, was a just a character. good guy and he yeah. was always playing practical jokes on his other golf friends and he finally made it and won the U.S. Open and just he yeah. it never really changed him. He was always still the happy, you know, easy to get along with guy that yeah, cared about guy. people. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, our, our kids uh, over here in the Bay Area did a there was a Payne Stewart uh, golf camp they did once. Oh, well, cool. Uh, cool to see that. Yeah. Awesome. Um, we haven't had a golfer yet uh, on that answer. So that's uh, that's great. Uh, we've had Morgan Freeman, Matthew McConaughey, Matthew McConaughey. We haven't had either. So. Um, those are all good answers, but I love Payne Stewart. Um, so, uh, next question, um, Italian or, uh, Chinese, uh, food when you go out to dinner, <laughs> what do you go for? Italian food. I, my grandfather is, uh, directly from Italy. So I got a little bit behind uh, me. Yep. Italian food. Molto bene. Awesome. I'm going to Italy this summer, so I can't wait. So I can't oh, wait to see that. It's amazing. It's beautiful. Um, I hope you get to go to the Amalfi Coast. Uh, we are. We are. So that should be, should be good. Uh, what's the last book you read? Ooh, uh, Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday. Okay. I haven't heard about that one. All right. I'll have it's to good. put it on it's good. It takes a lot of uh, writings from the Stoics or Stoicism that generally, like, they're written in Latin. They're not, like, the easiest thing to read. It's like having to read Crazy. Shakespeare sometimes. But if you get down to the meat and potatoes of it, which he does, and he sort of modernizes it, makes it quick to read. Um, it's just really, really good bits of wisdom and uh, ways to be mindful and 
think about, you know, the world around you a little bit differently and not get too yeah. hung up on your own ego. Um, yeah. Focus more on what you want to do versus what you, uh, what you want to do, what you want to get done, how you want to care for others versus yeah. who you want to be. Right. There are a lot of people with, yeah. uh, you know, identity and personal branding coaches and what you want to be. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Like, but truly, you know, focus on what you can get done and some other things will happen. Awesome. All right. We'll check that. We'll definitely put that in the show notes. Um, and then this is probably a longer answer, but how would you describe your job to your kids? Oh man. Um, I would say that daddy goes to a lot of meetings <laughs> and works with a lot of people and tries to convince them to do the right thing. And daddy gets to work with, um, a lot of really cool technology. Um, and whenever you had to speak into the microphone on your remote or to the Alexa device, daddy does something kind of like that. He makes that little magic thing happen. Perfect. Awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, yeah, that's it's, great. it's mostly meetings. That's, that's how they <laughs> understand it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, very cool. Well, uh, Bill, thank you so much uh, for your time today. Awesome. Thank you, Randy. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us on this episode with Bill Hawks from Citizens. Uh, if you want to hear more of this podcast, we got plenty of episodes. We started back in July of 2020, so definitely take a look back at our at our archive episodes, and we got more coming. So, thanks again for joining us this week. This has been another episode of Conversations That Matter. Y'all have a wonderful day. Take care. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Conversations That Matter. Subscribe to our podcast for more great content. And if you want to learn more about the topic we discussed, visit unifor.com today.